I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and I'm uh, and as part of our TV cinematographers panel for Meet the Experts, I'm speaking with Natalie Kingston from Apple TV Plus's Blackbird, Arnaud Valls uh, Colomer uh, uh, for uh, Amazon Prime's The English, Ramsey Nickel for Apple TV Plus's Five Days of Memorial, and Caleb Heyman for Netflix's Stranger Things. First question I want to uh, throw to uh, you, Natalie. Um, what were the influent? What was one of, or or what were some of the influential scenes that, when you saw them, that that made you think to yourself, "Yeah, I want to do that. I want to. I want to. I want to photograph this stuff for film and television." Um, nothing actually. It wasn't. It actually, honestly, it wasn't like watching a movie that <laughs> that really <laughs> inspired me because growing up, we didn't really watch that many movies my, my um, parents really weren't into watching films so I um, but I was a very creative child um, and they exposed me a lot to like live theater we saw a lot of musicals um, so I was always like creating like little musicals and plays with my friends and my sister and cousins um, little like circuses, um, little ice skating shows that I would do on my roller skates because I grew up in South Louisiana, so it didn't snow. Um, and always kind of like, you know, doing photo shoots with my Barbies. So always just doing these little productions. And it was, I guess I was around 10 years old when my parents bought a home video camera, you know, VHS camcorder style. And, um, I was like, you know, light bulb went off. I'm like, I could film these little plays. So I would adapt these, you know, children's stage plays I would find at the children's section in the library and into like screen plays <laughs> and make them into little movies. And, um, and like, I remember one that sticks out, it's called Night in the Spooky Mansion. And, um, you know, I remember like filming at my grandmother's house for the interiors, but then using this house across the street from her as the exteriors, because it was this like creepy house or whatever. And, and so just sort of like that um, magic that you could make with a camera um, really, really stuck with me. So um, I, I um, give the VHS um, camcorder credit for that. And so, um, of course, I didn't know what a cinematographer was at the time, you know, but this, the idea of just telling stories with a camera is the thing that stuck with me. So it really wasn't until I started working in the industry that it dawned on me like, okay, a cinematographer is the one that's really crafting and creating a visual language and has control over lighting and composition and the way things look. So, yeah. What about you, Caleb? Oh, um, yeah, I think for me, it was for me, it was a mix. Um, my mom is a documentary filmmaker. And but we kind of stumbled into it together. She was a professor at Portland State University. Um, so growing up in Portland, you're kind of far from the film industry. And it was this was the 90s is pre digital revolution when I was in high school and stuff. I mean, there were movies that I loved and there were movies like It that had always stuck with me. I mean, I'm talking about like the TV version, you know, that had haunted me since I was a, a kid and always had a thing for like horror. But then we kind of started, um, you know, doing documentaries together toward the end of high school, having no idea what we were doing on really, really basic equipment. Um, but it got me to start picking up a camera Um and, you know, and just going through the whole process of having to, you know, shoot, um, go on location, find the good natural light, come back, we would edit it together on the tape to tape, and kind of like, you know, think about the whole process holistically, as well as kind of like bake in those edit editing decisions, you know, as, as you went, because it was like linear, you know, there was, we didn't, we couldn't touch the Final Cut Pro machine because we couldn't afford that one. So that was an interesting kind of like training ground. Um, but then in college, shortly after that, it was like kind of seeing movies like um, Memento and Mulholland Drive and even Lost in Translation. And I was just like, 
you know, and, and a few years ago before that, like Fight Club. And I was just like this inter- really great time for, you know, for for cinema. And and so I had the opportunity in college to start taking a couple classes and um, in, in film and I, before I actually went to film school. And just, you know, I, I lost myself in them for the first time, lost track of time. And it was just like, this is what I have to figure out a way, a way to do. Um, but yeah, I got pretty obsessed with, with Mulholland Drive when, when that came out. I watched it like three times in one evening <laughs> trying to and figure out. you still had no idea what was going on. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point where I convinced myself I had figured it out. I can't even remember what it was, though. But yeah, I'll do soon. <laughs> and what about you, Arno? Uh, I think I got into the this film industry through the photography. Like uh, photography was like uh, when I was like sixteen, I had like a, this lesson in the school where it was like photography, and the photography teacher was like starting in the film school that was just starting in Barcelona at that time, and he told me like, "Oh, this this thing that is starting you," and then he showed me one day, and I was like, "Oh, fascinated!" About like, "Wow, you can do this like this little studio and lights and." cameras and everything and I got into the film school in Barcelona and then I moved to Poland and I went to the Polish film school and then there I discovered like the the wall for me and getting to know all these uh, Polish film traditions and all these uh, Eastern, Eastern European tradition of films that like, I was kind of aware but never got really into it that was the time for me to discover everything and then, and then back to the reality uh, of the industry <laughs> and going from there. And what about you, Ramsey? Um, well, my father was a, uh, was a film critic when I was young. And so, um, you know, kind of learned an appreciation for sitting in a dark theater and watching movies with him. And, um, but I really didn't, I didn't have any concept of what happened before I got into the theater and sat down. I mean, I, I just, I mean, I, I knew there was an industry I knew there was, but I just really, it was not anything I ever even thought about. And uh, I had a bunch of different jobs throughout my youth and I ended up in Los Angeles and um, I was sleeping on a buddy's couch and uh, starting to run out of money. It's a very long story, but the the shortened version is he was like, hey, you want to run some tapes for me? And he was editing a Pink Floyd concert. And I took some went and picked up some tapes from a post house there and took them up to the company, which was the name of the music video company that was doing it. And I saw this uh, this director was on a conference call in the office and he was talking. He was walking around. He's the conference table and the phone in the middle. And he was like talking about the. uh, how John was going to come shooting up out of the middle of the stage and then Richie was going to run around the thing. And as well as I was like, watching, I was just like in awe of his energy and his enthusiasm. He was talking about uh, lay your hands on me video by Bon Jovi that they were getting ready to do. And I was like, all right, whatever he's doing, I want to be a part of that. And so I became a PA and I just kept kind of lucking into one thing after another. And then I got in, um, I had a, a mentor, a great guy that hired me as an electrician when he was a best boy and he was besting for two of the biggest gaffers at the time in music videos. And then they started shooting and he moved up and started gaffing and got all of their clients, which was, you know, some of the best people in the business. And um, then he started shooting and every time, every time he's like, come on, you're my best boy now. I, was like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, come on. And then it was like, okay, you got a gaff for me. I'm like, all right. So I got from, and then I started gaffing for um, Bill Pope and uh, Larry Fong and Dan Mendel. And, uh, you know, all these guys who were like, you know, top of the game of music videos and are now, you know, some of the biggest guys in the business. And I just really and truly was in the right place at the right time, a million different times. And I can't believe how lucky I am that all those things happen for me to get to do something that if I thought about doing this as a kid and been working on it my whole life, it couldn't have turned out any better than it did. So just super, super fortunate. Uh, I want to have a little bit of fun here with a bit of a hypothetical. Um, uh, so you're all, uh, you're all here because you're representing different TV projects, but I'm curious as to, is there any TV show that you've watched 
recently, I don't know, maybe you've had time in the past two years to watch some TV. Uh, and, and you've said to yourself, oh man, I would love to shoot for this show. And, uh, I want to, and I know Caleb, uh, you, you can't say stranger things cause you're already on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say Marvel cause I'm, I'm getting to live out that dream right now. Um, just starting, starting prep on a project here for, for Marvel, which is, which I'm really excited about. And yeah, I mean, of course, like I really like to change it up and to you know to to do something very different if possible um so i would say i'm trying to think of a an actual series but doing like something that was like really character driven and had like really leaned into one person's subjectivity and the weird you know kind of uh just sci-fi future that we're heading into um you know where who knows where between climate change and changing technology and ai and all these things where it's all going to converge like a, a, a near you know sci-fi futuristic thing something that was like character driven would really appeal to me where we got to do a bit of world building but it was all in the interest of like serving a character I mean, I love I would love to do something for like Alex Garland you know and like like a mini series where like I thought devs was great, you know, something something like that would be like really appealing to me, I would say. I think I would love to have shot the night off, for example, or this kind of mini series or. And then I love I love political series as well. So uh, I, I think the, the series I've watched most is the West Wing. Uh, so I'm very much into this. But yeah, the kind of night off miniseries is like the kind of things that I was like, oh wow, that, I would like, I would love to have shot that. And uh, Ramsey, well, having just spent so much time working on such depressing shows, I'd really like to do something fun and lighthearted. I mean, uh, I I watched, uh, I really enjoyed watching The Great. You know, I just think it's fun, it's pretty, just like it's there's no like uh there's no real stakes you're just not feeling like you know you can just kind of go in there and have fun and not feel like you owe um i don't want to say oh but just like the responsibility of doing five days was weighed on me a lot and so to to do something where you just go in and you could actually laugh after a take i mean it's just i i would love to do something light <laughs> <laughs> and, and as and I, we were talking about American Crime, I remember how that felt watching it. So I understand what you're saying completely. Yeah, working with John Ridley, it's always uh, I I love 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 it, but man oh man, you just there's no 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 time for laughing. <clears throat> and uh, uh, what about you, Natalie? Um, there was this limited series called "I Know This Much Is True" on HBO. Just that's I think one of the best series I've ever seen is just so emotionally and character driven, which is just right up my alley. It was shot on film. Um, just the visual language was just so powerful. And I just really connected to that. It was very depressing, but that's also right up my alley. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I guess, yeah. So to shoot something like that and, and it, um, you know, Mark Ruffalo, played a set of twins so just the the challenge of of doing that um with the camera um and and all the on the other end of the spectrum like something like super stylized like euphoria could be a lot of fun um and just yeah just to get to play and um just coming up with like wild visual languages is um appealing to me well uh Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best uh, through this uh, upcoming season. And, uh, we look, and we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hope to see all of you guys again.